Hello, everyone. Hi, it's kind of hard to bring this up, you know? We need, like, an assistant to bring it up for you. <laughs> well, everyone, as they said, my name is Rachel, and I just joined the staff team as the kids team leader and as well as Tom's PA. <laughs> In my role as kids team leader, I am absolutely loving getting to know the kids and just seeing all that God is doing through them. And if that is something that interests you, please let me know. We're always looking for volunteers, so just a plug for kids really quick. <laughs> And my other role I, that I also started um, was being Tom's PA. So in that role, just, you know, pray for me. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. Tom is absolutely an amazing leader, and it's really grateful to be able to work for him. Today is Mothering Sunday, and I just want to take a brief moment before I start to thank all of the mothers here for all that they do. Um, it is such an honor. Um, really, to, I have a really lovely mother, and I'm so thankful to be able to have been raised by her. And so I just want to applaud all of the women who are here, um, the mothers who are here, just to thank you for the work that you're doing raising your children. As I'm sure you can recognize, I am not from Sheffield or even the UK originally. I am from New Jersey in the United States. I grew up in a town about five minutes from New York City, and I absolutely loved growing up there. And I, ask, I say a few words differently. I say eggplant instead of aubergine, and I call it a a garage instead of a garage, you know, lots of different things. Also, today it was 62 degrees, not 17. But, you know, those are a few just differences. And it's really funny because I can't really get over the weather here and how much you guys like to talk about it. And I found myself the other day introducing myself to someone, and I immediately started talking about the weather. So, you know, I'm becoming more British. <laughs> Three and a half years ago, I had never even heard of Sheffield. I had no idea that it was a city in the U.K. I'm a little embarrassed about our... Uh, our education system in the States saying that, but I had never heard of Sheffield until I became a missionary in Spain and met my now husband, James, and he is from here. <laughs> he is pretty handsome. I'll give you that one. <laughs> but he called Sheffield the greatest nation in the world, and I was a little bit confused by that because it's not a nation, but anyways, as I've come to, uh, to, to work here and live here, I must say that the city does live up to its reputation. It's been wonderful to move here, and I moved here actually only in October. But I want to say thank you to all of you who have welcomed me in. It's been lovely to be able to come into such a welcoming church community. For my first time speaking, I must say, I was expecting a few more words. I was only given six words to speak on tonight. You know, I'm really grateful that Tom did not give a, a much long passage with all of these really hard words to say. But I was expecting a few more words. I was given just six words to speak on tonight, and those words are, give us today our daily bread. That's it. So I'll do my best with the six words. <laughs> this Lent, we've been going through the Lord's Prayer and talking about the Father's heart. Who is our Father and who are we in relation to that? We are all children of God. As I start working in kids' ministry, I see the wonder and the faith in kids and how much they have such excitement for life. And I hope that we can all learn to live a bit more like that. Sam last week called us to align our lives with God's will and his kingdom. He talked about how we are called to surrender our will for God's. Today we are talking about the next part of the Lord's Prayer. Give us today our daily bread. If you remember the one thing from this whole preaching, let it be this. Our God is the provider of all of our needs. Not just physical, but also spiritual. In the last few weeks, the, part of the, the parts of the prayer have been focused on the your aspects. Addressing our Heavenly Father. God, your kingdom come. God, your will be done. Hallowed be your God's name. But today, it fo there's a shift here where it, focus it comes from the your parts of the prayer to the our. So today it is, give us today our daily bread. And then the next package will be on forgive our sins. So here it switches from the praising and asking God's will to become to asking about our own needs. This asking of God requires a realization that we need him for everything. You cannot breathe without God. You cannot speak without God. You cannot have peace without God. In our day and age where we have bread, right, it's easily at the store. We can go get it. Many of us do not actually worry really about where our next meal comes coming from. We might worry about what we're going to eat, but we don't really worry about where our next meal is going to come from. It can be easy to forget that we forget need God for every part of our living, including our food and even including our breath. We are dependent on him. Psalm 139.13 states, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. And then Genesis 2.7 states, Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, 
and man became a living being. Our very breath and every other part of us is dependent on God. Every gift we are given comes from him. There is a deep dependence that is shown from this verse. However, before we go on talking about our different needs, we must first realize our dependence on him. From there, then we can go into the asking. We see that God is inviting us into a relationship with him where we can ask God for our needs. The realization of our dependence is not enough. It then brings us to our needs where we can ask God for things. God calls us to pray for not just the big things, but also the small and significant things. When I first read this, read this verse, I was a bit perplexed as to why God would use bread. Bread is a very simple kind of food. You know, it's not a tiramisu, it's not a cheesecake, it's not a lobster, it's just bread, right? It's a very slowly type of food, but quite a staple in diets, especially back in Jesus' day. Pete Gregg in his book, How to Pray, states, when you pray about the small things in life, you get to live with greater gratitude. As I stated in the beginning, I grew up very close to New York City. And when I was growing up, we used to go into the city quite a lot for dinners or shows or things like that. And if you know anything about New York City, you know that parking is very difficult to find. There are so many people going in and out of New York City, and so when you, you, all the spots get filled up, actually quite like Sheffield when you're living in Crooks, right? <laughs> but as, we were, we were, as when I was growing up, you know, we used to go into the city a lot, and you could hardly ever find any parking. And parking in a garage there is so expensive. So for our family, it was just not going to happen. So my dad would just drive around and drive around and drive around. And after about two minutes, my mom would start praying that we would find a spot, much to my father's dismay. Now, my dad is a, is a, is a Christian. He's actually even a pastor. So it wasn't necessarily that he was frustrated by the prayer. But he was more f frustrated about how small that prayer seemed, you know. It was a bit too insignificant for this mighty God, you know, too small. But my mom would just keep praying. And again, we weren't driving around for very long before she would start praying, you know. So she would just pray and pray and pray as we drove around. She's all these streets, you know. And then finally, when we would find a spot, my mom would give thanks for this. And it reminds me of how many things that we think are too so insignificant to pray about. It's just a little test. It's not my GCSEs. It's just a presentation at work. My job doesn't depend on it. It's just the electricity bills. It's not that big. Although, let's be honest, we're all praying about the electricity bills right now. God is inviting us into a relationship where nothing is too small for him. Nothing is, is too insignificant that God would not care about. He cares about it all because he cares about us. Have you ever had a time when you prayed about something and God answered it and brought a breakthrough? Maybe it was a test where you thought you were going to fail, but then you ended up passing. Or a job interview that you didn't think went well, but then you got the job. God truly does answer our prayers. He provides for our needs. I look at the picture here on stage, and I think about God welcoming us in and wanting to hear about all the needs that are in our life, big and small. When you're a father, I can't imagine that some of your, your daughter would come to you and say something about a really small little toy. You know, they, they it's obsess. Kids obsess about the littlest things, you know, and they want to carry it all around. And when they lose it, it's not like the parent goes, Oh, no, it wasn't that big of a deal anyway, you know. They look, and they're looking all over the house trying to find this little tiny thing that their kid is obsessed with, right? And that's just how God is with us. The thing that I think is key, though, in Pete Gregg's quote, when you pray about the small things in life, you get to live with greater gratitude, is the gratitude. When we pray about small things and the prayer requests get answered, we then get to thank God for it, just like my mom with a parking spot. This is living in a day-to-day -day dependence. A prayer for the immediate, not just the big future things, but also the prayer for the immediate things. We get to ask God to provide for all of our needs, not just the great big ones, but also the small ones. George Mueller was a 19th century philanthropist and pastor, and he started over 117 schools. He cared for over 10,000 orphans, and he educated over 120,000 students in his life. Without many mouths to feed, George Mueller must have taken this verse very seriously. One day, he stood before 300 hungry orphans at breakfast time, and knowing that there was no food in the kitchen, he stood up and prayed, giving thanks in advance for what God would provide. Now that is faith. After he prayed, there was a knock at the door, and the local baker carried in three huge trays of bread. He had been up since 2 a.m. baking bread for them. Next, the local milkman 
came in telling them that his cart had broken down right outside and wanted to see if the orphanage could use the milk because he, it was going to go bad. 300 orphans ate that morning, and their daily bread was provided. And George Mueller thought to pray beforehand. He didn't know where the food was going to come, for, come from, but he still prayed about it, and God answered his prayer. The same God who provided breakfast for George Mueller and 300 orphans can provide for you too. In the Bible, we see bread quite a lot. It was a staple food for the Israelites in the Old Testament, as well as a staple for the Gentiles and the new Christians in the New Testament. Once when Jesus was here on earth, we see the story where Jesus multiplies the bread and the fish. He's preaching to a large crowd and it's getting later in the day. He sees their hunger and decides to meet the need. So I'm going to read for us from Matthew 14, 15 to 21. Sorry, too many things on the thing. <laughs> so Matthew 14, 15 to 21 states, As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. In the culture which Jesus lives, a lot of the people would have been farmers or fishermen. If there was a bad crop that year or there was a day that you didn't catch any fish, you would have been looking to find food. And I think about the disciples who gave up everything to follow Jesus. It says that they left their, their boats and their fishing and they followed Jesus. They left their mothers and fathers. The call to follow Jesus for them was quite costly and they would have had to trust Jesus for their next meal. That might be why when they see a really large crowd, they did not think that they could afford to feed all of them. They immediately think they need to send them away. However, Jesus did not just want to send them on their way with their needs being unmet. He cared about their hunger, and he cares about ours as well. You may not be literally hungry right now, but we all have needs. Maybe you have student loans that you're nervous about. Maybe you have a need a miracle physically in your body. Maybe you have a test coming up that you're anxious about. Maybe you have body image struggles. Maybe you're wanting to buy a house. God cares about each of these. If we give them to him, we can see what he can do. What are the physical things that you are needing right now? They may be big or small, but God is asking us to realize our dependence on him and then ask for those needs. So I want us to just take a minute right now to process and think through that. Pray and ask God for the physical things that you need right now. Let's take a minute. As a reminder, our God is able and willing to provide for each need that you have, both physical and spiritual. After university, I decided to go to Barcelona, Spain to be a missionary there. Now, if you don't know, when you're a missionary, you have to raise all of your funds. <laughs> I was going there for a two-year commitment, which means I had to raise enough money for me to live on for two years, as well as some extra things for ministry and flights and other things. And when I first saw the amount that I had to raise, I genuinely thought, I will never make it. I'm never going. But God was so faithful. Now, I, I will say, I did have to work at it. I went around for about a year going around to different churches and raising money. But God was so faithful. He provided every pound that I needed. And he can do the same with you. As I discussed before, we are now in the our aspects of this prayer. The verse states, give us today our daily bread. And we don't want to forget to pray also for the physical needs of the world. There are still millions of people who go to bed each day with hunger pains. 
In this time of the Ukraine crisis as well, we've been praying for the Ukrainians, and they have many physical needs, including housing, food, medical equipment, and so many more things. So let's keep praying for the us, the believers all around the world who have immense physical needs. Just as with our physical needs, each day we are also called to continually go to God so that he can provide for our spiritual needs. It's interesting because theologians all struggle with this word for daily in this here. And the root of the word, the ancient word, means to take upon oneself and carry what has been raised up. To bear away what has been raised. To carry off. And one thing that I saw in this was that you cannot carry off something unless you go to the source. Jesus is our source. He is the source of love. He's the source of peace. He's the source of life itself. He's the source of joy. We cannot carry these things off, though, unless we go to him. In the Old Testament, the Israelites leave Egypt, where they've been living for generations as slaves. And they're set free, finally, and they're able to leave Egypt. Pretty quickly, though, they're wandering around in the wilderness, right? And they're on their way to the promised land, and they start to get hungry and tired. Hanger, I believe it's called. <laughs> and so they begin to grumble, and they begin to complain, and they ask God for food. And he makes it rain down manna, or bread. If you remember, though, from the story, each day they had to go and collect it. It wasn't like they could just, it wasn't like a grocery store. They couldn't go and collect a whole week's worth of groceries. They had to collect it each day. Each day they needed to go and put the bread in their baskets. In a similar way, God calls us each day to go to him to be filled up, to fill our baskets spiritually. So I want you to think about what's in your basket. Is your basket full? Or is it empty? Let's take 30 seconds now just to quietly reflect on that. You can close your eyes and pray and reflect if you are going to God for your spiritual needs. What is in your basket? Let's always remember that our God is the provider of our needs, both physical and spiritual. But we have to go and fill up that basket. Isn't it amazing how you can have a full meal and then be hungry the next day? I'm talking like full meal, you know? Somebody else is paying, obviously. So you've gotten a starter, a main, and a pudding. <laughs> you've had the Yorkshire pudding, the roast chicken, the mashed roast potatoes, you got the veggies. And then to top it all off, you've got the sticky toffee pudding with some cream on top, you know, full meal. And after the meal, you're thinking, I'm never going to eat again. I am so full. I'm never going to eat again. And then the way you wake up the next morning, and what do you feel? Hunger. Isn't it amazing? In the same way, each day we are called to go back to the source, to Jesus, and be filled once again. Jesus calls himself the bread of life. John 6, 32 through 35 states, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven. But it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So are you going to the source to get your spiritual needs met? Are you going to Jesus each day, the source of your spiritual bread? Whether it's worry or fear or comparison or jealousy or sickness or loss of job or depression, anxiety, unpredictable future. I mean, there's so many needs that we can have. But these needs can all be brought to Jesus to fill you up. Lamentations 3.23 tells us that God's mercies are new every morning. They never run out. And if I'm being honest with all of you, I've been in a bit of a dry season season where I can go every day to God, and it doesn't always feel like I can hear him, or I can feel that renewal. It doesn't always feel like he's speaking, but each day I choose to praise him anyway. Why? Because I know that his mercies are new every morning. Even when I can't feel it, I know that he is the source, 
and that he is filling me up. It's an interesting balance between asking God for our needs and also asking for his will to be done. He doesn't always meet our needs the way that we want. But he calls us to bring them to him and then trust him with the outcome. As Sam described last week, we live in the not yet. We're not fully made new yet. So we live here in the messy earth with lots of needs, both physical and spiritual. Whatever season of life that you are in, whether it's the most joyful season or maybe a season of drought, I pray that you would go to the source of joy, peace, goodness, and love. We're getting ready to land, as all the great pastors say. So, Van, will you please come up? <laughs> as I close, I just want to tell you a little bit about my story. When I was 17 years old, I found out that I had what was called an AVM, an arteriovenous malformation. Very fancy word. <laughs> Basically, there was a, a group of blood vessels in my brain that had blo blood flowing at a really high pressure. And it leads to bulging and eventually bursting. And when it bursts, it's basically an aneurysm, blood bleeding in your brain. If they do burst, some people do not survive. And some people who do survive end up needing to relearn how to walk and speak. And some even have life-altering effects. Six weeks after I found out, I had to have brain surgery. I remember the days leading up to my surgery were so scary and quite painful. Obviously, with brain surgery, there are a lot of risks. A major one with my surgery being that it was very possible that I could never speak or be able to sing again. God held my hand through that entire process. God met my physical need through healing and surgery. I stand here completely fine. I have no major side effects, and obviously, I can speak. <laughs> However, God did not just meet my physical need at that time. He has provided healing of spiritual needs during and after, of peace and mercy in a time of immense pain and fear. I don't know what you came in here with today, but I do know that God knows and that he is the provider for all of our needs. As we end now, we're about to go into communion, and what a perfect ending for this message. <laughs> Jesus calls himself the bread of life. He is the source of our provision. He is the one who can fill us up. As we go and we eat this bread, let's think about how Jesus went through such pain and such hurt so that our sins can be provided for. He gave his life to provide for the need of salvation and continually still provides for us both physically and spiritually. So as I end, let me just pray for us. Lord, I don't know what each individual need is in this room, but you do. God, I pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we would go to you for our needs. May we realize our independence on you. Thank you that you love us and that you continually fill us. Thank you that you died on the cross to provide salvation for us. As we eat this bread and drink this wine, may it remind us of your sacrifice for us, and may we constantly go back to you, our source. Whatever needs that we have in this room, whether physical or spiritual, I pray that you would fill us.